The first animals to take to the air were the insects, the oldest definite insect flyer being a creature named Delitzschala that buzzed through the humid jungles of Germany that existed around 320 million years ago in the Carboniferous period. Flying insects became extremely common, conquering the skies, but it wasn't until many millions of years later in the mid-Triassic, about 220 million years ago, that the first vertebrate flyers developed powered flight, the pterosaurs. However, before this, there were many times that vertebrates had evolved to glide through the air, sometimes in similar ways to animals that live today, but sometimes the ancient gliders way of getting airborne was completely different to any living animals. Insects were the only flying animals for an incredibly long time after they evolved, but this changed by about 260 million years ago. A small reptile was discovered in Madagascar in the early 20th century that unusually had long rod-like structures along the edge of its body, but they were not part of the ribs and were actually newly developed bones that extended from their skin, and the explanation for these unusual rods is that in life they were covered in skin, forming a wing. The creature was named Solora Saravis and is the earliest known aerial vertebrate, although it was not capable of powered flight. The creature's wings were very similar to the living draco lizard that are found in various Southeast Asian countries that most likely had similar wings, although it is thought that Solora Saravis probably wasn't as elegant of a flyer. Solora Saravis was around the same length as a human arm and also had a small head crest that may have been used for display. Not long after Solora Saravis was named, another gliding reptile was found in Germany from around the same time period and now other similar reptiles have been found in other parts of Europe as well. They were named the Weigeltosaurids, and due to many of their fossils being found around the world in a similar time frame, they must have been very successful and spread out quickly. To date, no stomach contents have been found, but due to their sharp conical teeth and small size, they most likely would have hunted small animals like insects, and because of their gliding abilities, would have been able to catch hard to reach prey, like climbing and flying animals, and may have owed this to their quick success. The earliest flying insects, like the Litschala, were herbivorous, and during the Carboniferous period, there weren't the multi-layered aerial food chains that we have today. Eventually, some flying animals would evolve to become hunters, but the first flying predators were just larger insects, like Meganeura, the giant dragonfly that could grow to the size of a large crow. But by about 300 million years ago when the vast jungles of the Carboniferous shrunk shrunk and gave way to the more arid habitats of the Permian, the giant flying insects became much less common, but also the numbers of giant insects and arachnids in general started to diminish. Why insects were larger during the Carboniferous period isn't entirely understood, but it is most likely due to the higher atmospheric oxygen, and there is evidence that these incredibly high oxygen levels lowered by the Permian period and so the insects were no longer able to grow beyond a certain size. This meant that vertebrates could now fill the niche of flying or at least gliding creatures. Not only were the Weigeltosaurids well adapted to hunt smaller creatures in the air and in the trees, but they would have also been able to quickly escape predators by gliding, which may have been the reason their populations exploded. The Weigeltosaurids were the first known gliding vertebrates, but they aren't the ancestors of any modern gliding animals like draco lizards or extinct creatures like pterosaurs, and are a lineage of ancient gliding animals that have no living representatives. Fossils from Weigeltosaurids disappear from the record about 250 million years ago, at the end of the Permian, and so they were most likely victims of the mass extinction, the Permian extinction, that marked the end of the Permian period and the beginning of the Triassic. Around the mid-Triassic, a group of small reptiles closely related to dinosaurs would evolve web digits and become the very first vertebrates capable of powered flight, the pterosaurs. However, at this time, there was a whole other group of creatures that also evolved to take to the air, but in a completely different way. They were called the Sharaviptorygids, and the first member of this group to be discovered was found in Kyrgyzstan, and was called Sharaviptorix. The remnants of its fossilized membrane weren't stretched across its front limbs like a pterosaur and instead were hung from its hind limbs. The front limbs of the Sharaviptorix fossil didn't preserve, but another Sharaviptorygid discovered in Poland called Ozomek has fossilized front limbs as well and they were several times smaller than their hind limbs. 
So if Shara Victorix was the same, these creatures would have glided through the air, balanced on their hind limbs with their tiny arms jutted out in front like the small wings of some aircraft designs, making them look almost like tiny jet planes. With Shara Victorix being the size of a very small bird, while Ozomek was about the size of a large crow. Unlike the Vigaltosaurids that arguably had a similar gliding mechanism to modern day Draco lizards, the gliding mechanisms of Charaviptorigids were unlike any glider that exists today, from the Draco lizard to flying snakes. It's possible that the membrane may have covered the front arms as well, and that it just didn't preserve here in the fossil. However, even if this is the case, its gliding membranes would have still made a unique reverse kite shape, as its legs were several times larger than its arms. Out of the animals that have a membrane connected to all of their limbs, like flying squirrels and colugos, the limb length is usually equal. So why did Charaviptorix have such a strange gliding shape not shared by any other known glider? And why has this shape not evolved again? It may not be that the body layout was any less efficient at gliding. In fact, it may have been even more efficient. Most gliding animals evolved from climbing animals, and this includes prehistoric creatures, as fossils of ancient gliders have ankles and wrist joints that you usually see in climbing animals. So it is thought that the way that at least most animals evolved to glide is that they initially develop a lighter body and very small membranes as it made it more likely that they would survive if they fell. Once they had got this evolutionary foot in the door, it was then possible to develop more robust wing membranes and steering mechanisms as they would glide purposefully to help them hunt or help them escape predators. Most animals that have evolved to climb are more likely to have equal length or larger and stronger front limbs, and so it may just be that climbing animals are unlikely to have the body shape like Charaviptorix, and not that it made them any worse at gliding, which may explain why its strange wing shape hasn't been replicated in the animal kingdom since. Due to many similarities in Charaviptorix's skeleton, as well as the other Charaviptoridae, like Ozomek, they most likely belong to a group of peculiar prehistoric reptiles known as the Proterosaurs. The Proterosaurs have no close living relatives, however during the Triassic period they were one of the most common groups of animals, and some of the biggest Triassic oddballs were the Proterosaurs, like Tanistrophius and the Drapanosaurs. Most Proterosaurs, especially the more primitive ones, usually had much larger hind limbs than front limbs, so it may be this strange wing shape of the Charaviptorigids was simply down to the creatures they evolved from having long legs, and so that's what they had to work with. Evolution has to work with what it already has, so the outcome may not be perfect, but it just needs to do the job well enough for the animal to survive and pass on its genes. Gliding animals don't tend to diversify very much, or last very long, unless they develop powered flight, and both the Vigaltosaurids and the Charaviptorigids don't have any living relatives, or relatives that survived on much longer than when they first evolved. However, at the same time when Charaviptorix was soaring through the air, the pterosaurs were evolving powered flights, and went on to dominate the skies for the next 160 million years. Thank you for watching. A big thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.